Welcome to Construction Revolution. The revolution in the construction industry isn't just coming, it's, it's, it's already started. This is Construction Revolution. Construction Revolution. This is the, this revolution. Is the revolution. Construction, construction revolution. 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 Okay, hey everybody, I'm Matthew Newberger and welcome back to the Construction Revolution. And at Newberger and Company, one of the things that we care deeply about are the issues facing construction. We believe the built environment uh, is where everything ultimately runs from. So it's important that we protect it, we take care of it, we grow it, and we uh, look at all of the challenges we have that are coming over the next 10 years and look at solutions to solve that. And this podcast is really for those innovative, those entrepreneurial minded construction companies that are looking for ways to tackle the biggest problems in the industry today. And so with me, um, I have Bill Wagner. Bill, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. And Bill is with Penta. And we're going to be talking today about Penta, but specifically about Struxy, which is a product within Penta's offerings. So uh, Bill, Let's do just maybe a quick introduction. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do at Penta and Struxy, and and then we'll talk. We'll go into some some you know some details about the work you do. Sure. And so right now I'm the president at Penta Technologies, which means I you know, run the company. Um, I've been with Penta four years. This is actually my third stop in the construction industry. Started working for my uncle's general contracting business on the south side of Chicago when I was in high school and college. Spent a little bit of time selling tools for concrete construction into the construction industry. Yeah. And you know, coming into Penta, and we'll get into this later, I'm sure, it was a real opportunity to work with a company that has a long history enabling construction companies with technology at a really interesting time in the construction industry, right? right? So, you know, that's been my focus for the last four years is bringing that software toolkit into the hands of primarily specialty trades. Okay, so yeah, let's let's get into that a little bit, but, but everybody yeah. should know something personal about you. And sure. A little bit about this just quickly offline, which is, you're from the south side of Chicago, but now you're a Green Bay Packers fan. Oh, no, I am not a Green Bay Packer fan. So <laughs> I am a long-suffering Chicago Bears fan. The yeah. story on this is I went to Marquette University for college in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'll never forget it. My freshman year is when Brett Favre started as the Packers quarterback. So I have lived through 25 years of my favorite team getting its teeth kicked in by the local <laughs> favorites up here in Milwaukee. So as we were talking before the podcast started, I know how to defend myself in all sorts of ways, both physical and emotional. <laughs> yeah, and that's always good for the construction industry. So Absolutely. being in an industry growing up on the south side of Chicago, and then, and then moving to a place where your enemy is, but you didn't take on the idea of if we can't beat them, join them. You never joined the Green Bay Packers fan club. You, you stayed a, a Bears fan. and. And so uh, you've been you know, a long-suffering Bears fan at that. I, I Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but getting back to construction and maybe how this mm -hmm. all plays, tell us about your work at Penta now. So yeah. what does Truxy and Penta do? And, and, and who are your customers? And, 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 you know, sort of what's the claim to fame? Sure. That might be more Penta. So yeah, for sure. And then go to Penta. Yeah, so, you know, the Penta story, if you'll indulge me for 90 seconds, we actually started as a software company for construction companies all the way back in 1968. We were founded by a computer scientist, a CPA who focused on job cost accounting, and an owner of a specialty contracting business. And for the vast majority of the last 50 years, what we've been really good at, which is something that Newberger and company is really familiar with, it it began with this hypothesis that if you could do better, more granular job cost accounting, you would be better and able to win business that you were going to make money on. Yes. And, and so, you know, the, the whole history of the software we produced is keep really good track of your granular job costs, 
We got really good at really complex payroll along the way because labor is such a huge component of your job cost. Right. And over the years, as computer technology has evolved, I like to think that we've gotten better and better at refining our focus into a narrower and narrower area of the problem. And the area that we're focused on primarily today and the Struxy product is the tool that we've developed to really get at it, is helping construction companies leverage labor productivity in a very granular fashion to stay ahead of your labor costs spiraling out of control and your project timeline spiraling out of control. The sweet spot for our customers, typically fairly large, fairly complex, specialty contractors or general contractors who self-perform a good chunk of their own work because that, that whole proposition of we're really good at helping you stay on top of your granular job costs has much more resonance with people that are actually managing the work getting done on the job site. And I would also imagine that just even small percentages of improvement end up being big dollars on the project because of the size of the projects. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you know, uh, one of the things that we still run into all over the construction industry is people using paper to keep track of time and attendance. Yeah. I see. And, and, you know, the, the, the whole like, I'm going to fill out my time card for my crew of 20 laborers at Friday afternoon at 430 because I got to make sure it gets into payroll so they get paid, which is, you know, like that's a total creative writing exercise at that point. Right. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Right. How much time is wasted looking for information. Right. Uh, massive amounts. And, uh, you know, I, I would like to see you guys, and you know, come up with something and maybe you do already. Yeah. We have the, the, the next big, you know, trade or, or, or subcontractors. And I mean, and, and I'm talking, these are 25, $35 million businesses yeah. that they really need help yes. uh, when it comes to these things, because you typically have an owner that is really good at job costing, but can't transfer that to anybody else in the organization. So they become a slave to their business. And as they grow, it actually creates pain. Absolutely. And it created, and, and, and in a lot of cases, it erodes margin. So they're wondering, well, where's all my money at the end of the year? And one bad construction project can take them from being profitable to unprofitable in any given year. Are, are you working towards those as well? Do they, yes. they ever hire you? Yeah, I mean, you know, as you were talking about that owner who has all this institutional knowledge in their head, my brain immediately went to a conversation that I've had hundreds of times in the last four years, which is I'm talking to a senior project manager, usually, you know, the grizzled veteran that you would picture in your head, right? Guy that worked his way up from the job site. And, and I ask, I always ask those guys whenever I get an opportunity to get face to face to them. How do you know when you're ahead or behind on your job? Like, what's your mechanism to, to figure that out? And, and the answer is usually I go walk the job site. I look outside my job trailer. Maybe they're at the level of sophistication where they're running monthly productivity reports where they're tracking estimated versus actual. Right. And, and what I'll always do whenever I have that conversation, if, if the CFO is in the room or the owner's in the room, I'm like, you're really okay with harboring that amount of risk inside your organization right now, because I can show you a better way to stay on top of that in like 10 minutes, but it's going to require that you think differently about the, the whole mechanism through which you're staying on top of this information, because managing multi-million dollar, highly complex construction projects by using the force is, is not a good methodology in 2021. <laughs> No, and you can't scale it. That, no. What, what it, any business that stays small stays small because they believe they have people that have unique talent. Yes. That they cannot replicate. They got to get rid of that belief system. Software does that, but it's scary because if if that's your if that gives you a sense of job security and importance, you're yes. going to fight against making that standardized. But you know, you guys actually, um, I, I want to kind of hit on this one part that you serve, which is. You can actually um, help in this war on talent that's happening in yes. construction and in other industries, but certainly in construction. Your software can help reduce 
the demand on labor, which is a yes. big complaint. And, and you actually have a calculator on your website that mm -hmm. we'll talk about at the end that people can go and find. So they can actually figure out, you know, maybe I can do more work with less people. Yes. Um, and right now, I I'm telling you, in the next 10 years, that is going to be a difference between the winners and the losers in construction. So I, I want to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But I want you just in maybe 30 seconds or 60 seconds. Sure. What is Penta's claim to fame? And you talked about you touched on it a little bit, which is mm -hmm. you started in 68 before there were really computers on everybody's desktop or yeah. a mobile computer in your hand. What, what what would most of the world know Penta, uh, you know, for? What, what, yeah. what was the big thing they did? I really, I mean, to, to boil it down to a simple statement, we have a demonstrated track record of being really good at keeping people out in front of the original estimate, right? It's a because, big complaint. I, when I have an owner in the room of a yeah. medium-sized company under 100 million, <clears throat> They're scratching their head and they're yes. talking to their project management team and saying, if we could just get the margin that we built at the beginning of the project, why can't we do that? And that's the biggest problem they have. That's how they say it. If yes. that, you just figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's you know, right. having done construction accounting since 1968, it, construction does accounting like no other industry in the world. Construction doesn't do accounting based on the revenue coming in the way you run your business or the way I run mine, right? And then we know that, hey, I'm running a profitable business with 30% net margins. The more I bring in, the more money I'm going to make. Construction companies do it almost in reverse where they, they know what it's going to take to get the work performed. And the best they can do is watch that like a hawk at a really granular level, because the I think the myth is that by doing it that way, you're gonna somehow stop the, the bleeding from opening up this giant geyser of money that's gonna flow out on a bad project. Right. And I think people who don't work in construction, they don't understand the mechanics of construction job cost accounting, and they don't understand the mindset of what it takes to run a professional services business that has unbelievably low margins, where every time you take on a new job, it's different than the last one you did. It's really unbelievable when you zoom far enough out and you look at how the construction industry works, that people are able to profitably get the work done at all, because the amount of challenges that face a given construction project are like limitless. It's an infinite number of exceptions that you have to manage every week on a typical job site. Yeah. And, you know, what I what I also find is, is it, it, and I, I like that. I think that we've got to change the thinking of this bravado, which I can control the controllable. Yeah. To, and, and, and by the way, and I can change order my way into even yeah. more profits. And and I get it. I understand that that has been the prevailing thought process for the last, I don't know, since the beginning of time as mm -hmm. it relates to construction. Uh, but to your point, it puts a lot of pressure and a lot of uncertainty on a construction business, which is so needed right now. Yeah. So what is the change of thinking? The, the folks who get it, how do they think about it differently? You know, I I think the, the people that get it that I have the luxury of working with, they spend a good amount of time looking at the world outside of construction, right? There are other somewhat analogous industries that have solved bits and pieces of the problem that construction is faced with. One of the things I love talking about, like I run a software company, software companies run very similar to construction companies. We live and die by short interval scheduling, right? This concept of agile, which is starting to take root in construction. Software companies figured out that they needed to do that a long time ago. The way, the way we used to build software was a technique called waterfall which looks very similar to the way a construction company builds a project right now. You right. try to plan everything up front. And then there, there was this concept that was called the cone of uncertainty, <laughs> where at the beginning of the project, there's no uncertainty, but the deeper you get into it, the wider and wider the cone gets. And what software companies were realizing is that 
any given piece of software that I try to build, it could end up costing four times as much money as I originally expected it was going to cost. So we did. We said, let's break it into smaller pieces. Smart construction companies that I work with, they've embraced short interval scheduling, right? They take thinner and thinner slices of the job and they keep their eyes on it that way, as opposed to thinking that uh, tightly managing the flow of money in and out of the AP and AR process is the right way to do it. Instead, what they do is they get the smart people that are making decisions that impact job profitability, looking at the data every week, every day, every hour in something approximating real time. The other thing we do in software that I see smart construction companies do, we predict based on historical data because it's never been easier to harvest insight out of a massive data set. I could run a report right now on the last three years of software development that I've done inside my business. And I could predict with a confidence interval when the next thing I try to build is going to get done. I'm seeing smart construction companies do that right now. And your comment earlier about who are the winners and the losers, the construction companies that are doing that, they are gobbling up the little guys left and right. And when they're absorbing them, they are immediately making them more efficient and more profitable by teaching them. Yeah, they're unlocking the productivity. Unlock the productivity. And so I want to get into that because I believe that Struxy, your mm -hmm. software actually does this. Yes. And, and so it's not like you have to invent this. It's already been invented. Right. But the, what I want everybody to really take down who's watching this podcast is you need to start thin slicing your stages of the project, not from a cash flow, but from a communication standpoint. Yeah. And by doing so, you're unlocking a lot of value. Now, um, uh, we have one other process, and we've, we've had a podcast on this called uh, Project Partnering, which is something we do with clients, which helps improve communication. And the only reason I mention that is because um, it's very consistent with what you're saying yeah. in, in terms of, you know, but, but when, when we're doing it, what we're doing is trying to unlock better and more effective communication up and down line in a project. Yeah, uh, because as you know, if something happens upstream wrong, it affects everything downstream. Everybody already knows that. Um, but um, to be able to wrap software into that is next level. And really, yeah. it, it to your point, it'll be the difference between winners and losers. So you've you've written and spoken about the labor shortage and how you know digital solutions can work to sort of counteract some of the burden um, by not having enough workers. Mm -hmm. Talk to us. You know, pretend I'm a general contractor. Talk to me about that. How, yeah. how could you help me? And, and, and specifically, what is the problem? And what do you see as the solution in, in a little more detail that we've already started down that road? Yeah, I mean, I usually start by showing a, a lot of people have already seen this. You may have already seen it. U.S. Department of Labor runs statistics on productivity for a given unit of labor, right? An hour of a worker's time. Right. Every industry in the United States has unlocked double digit compound annual growth rates of productivity in the last 20 years, construction remains flat. This is like to add to the context of that, this is happening while construction is facing a massive labor crunch on both ends. We talked about the experienced project manager or owner before. All of those folks are aging out of the industry at unbelievably rapid pace. They're all in their late 50s, early 60s. They're eyeballing retirement. Yep. Meanwhile, on the other end of this, young people don't want to work in construction. And the reason they don't want to work in construction is, hey, 22-year-old uh, who just got out of college, you're a project manager. You've been using iPads and computers since you were eight years old. <laughs> Fill out this paper time card and manage the entire complex construction project in Microsoft Excel. Right. And, and so what we do with the Struxy product in particular, it's a digital toolkit for the decision maker in the field, right? The foreman, the job superintendent, the project, the project manager. And basically what we do, we make it really easy to keep track of when your team is showing up and leaving the job site. We have a simple digital time clock that actually is just for information only. It doesn't flow immediately in the payroll. And the reason we do that is we know that construction companies are paying that foreman, that project lead, that project manager 
to make decisions about how they're applying the labor to the work every day. Yep. And so you log into our software and it's got your project in there. It has all of the folks that are on site. You could group them into teams really easily. And then you punch in, okay, how much time did each of these teams spend in each of the cost codes today? And what did we get done? And by forcing people to look at that information every day, we, we typically get three or four main benefits, right? We get rid of the payroll rounding that comes out of the creative writing exercise I mentioned earlier. <laughs> right. We give that decision maker time back to make decisions as opposed to chase information around the job site, which is patently ridiculous in 2021 that that still happens. And it happens a lot. <clears throat> yeah, it's crazy. And then the, then, you know, we're putting them in more control by taking that thinner and thinner slice by forcing them to put their eyeballs on it every day. And in long term, once you build the data set, you put your business in the position like, okay, tomorrow I got to make a decision. Am I trying to get this work in this cost code done as fast as possible? Or do I want to make as much money as possible? If we have the last year's worth of data of every team and every individual and every cost code on every project, we could actually tell you which person on that job site to put on that work based on what you're trying to get done, which newsflash, that's the reason why all the other industries on that U.S. Uh, Department of Labor report have gotten more productive. They've gotten a lot more effective at wielding the workforce they already have. Yeah, but what do, you say, you know, what do you say to grizzled veterans? Because I already know who my productive people. I don't need software to tell me that. I I would tell them, great, good for you. Like that's awesome for you and everybody that your span of control can touch. <laughs> do you ever take time off? <laughs> do you ever take a vacation? How long are you planning to work for? How many more people in your business have that type of knowledge? So, Wouldn't it be amazing if I could take what you know and have a 22 year old project manager? already have access to all that institutional wow. knowledge on day one. Wouldn't that be a cool thing? I love it. And, and what I would say to people who are thing is, is that thinking, that old grizzled veteran thinking, look, you deserve a lot of credit for everything that you have mm -hmm. learned, the value that you add, but you have become a slave to the business. Yes. Whether you're the owner or whether you're somebody that's just uh, a member of the team, you're a slave. You are absolutely required on everything. And while that may feel good, yeah. To be able to to display that talent, it's holding the company, it's holding your company back and putting you at risk. Yeah, you know, the other thing that I think is fascinating when you get into the mindset of that owner, right? Yeah. I love to get up on my soapbox and talk about valuations of businesses, right? Enterprise because value. Yeah, because I, I didn't work in construction my entire career. And one of my favorite things I, I love to talk about is Amazon versus Walmart. By any objective metric, Walmart is a way better business. It's more profitable. It was bigger for a very long time. Yet the stock market valued Amazon at you know eight times what Walmart has been valued. The reason is, is because people viewed Amazon as a technologically empowered disruptor to an industry. Right. My software company, if I talk to a private equity firm, they would give me a valuation on my software company that is a multiple of my trailing 12 month revenue. The right. best you're gonna get for your old school construction company is a single digit multiple of your annual profit. The reason is nobody's looking at you as a progressive business that is trying to disrupt your industry. No one is expecting that some explosive growth event is just around the corner because you're gonna unlock some better way to, to solve the problem. Right. The construction companies that are doing that, that are engaged. I mean, the Katera story is unfortunate because they they screwed up the the position that they were able to garner. But this was a company that had no experience in construction and they got to a four billion dollar valuation. SoftBank in Japan gave them nine hundred million dollars of investment money because the whole story was we're here to disrupt a very old school, unproductive industry. And we're going to do it with short interval scheduling, lean methodologies, and we're going to vertically integrate our supply chain. And so, you know, th there's the whole personal conversation that you can have with that owner. And then there's also the broader business conversation you can have with them. And if you think you're going to stick your head in the sand and ignore technology as a really powerful tool, not just to unlock the productivity, 
but to increase the value of your firm to other people, if you think you might one day want to exit or sell it to somebody else, you are really missing out on a massive opportunity right now. Well, you know, and that's, that's really well put. And one of the first things that we're talking to our clients about is what is your goal? And if they say just yeah. to make more money next year, we say, uh, uh-uh. uh, yeah. Um, it, we, we can do that a very inexpensive and cheap way. Right. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like if you're hungry, eating a slice of pizza instead of salad. Right. Right. If you really want to, using that analogy, eat your vegetables, you've got to look at the ability for you to sustain growth and margin advantage. That equals enterprise value. Right. And so to an owner, to any business, whether you decide you want to sell or not, is less important than understanding that you have to be valuable to the marketplace Mm -hmm. if and when you decide to sell. And so to your point, um, there's a point in here I want to get to, and then I want to kind of move on to maybe a specific example or case study you could share with everybody. Mm -hmm. Like I'm getting it, but I'm not, I'm not getting a real sense of what it would be like. So give us a case study in a second, but there's this question that I ask business owners and people, and I'm always surprised by how many people answer it wrong. The question is this, and it's a simple one. You may have even heard it. Would you rather, I, I know you know Sandler training and you know the sales mm-hmm. process we use, and so you've probably heard it through Sandler. Uh, would you rather have a million dollars today or a penny a day doubled for 30 days? Most people say, I'll take the million dollars yep. today. But the right answer is a penny a day doubled for 30 days because it's worth north of $5 million. Now, the difference is in understanding the compounding effect of doing things a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Some people call it, you know, compounding plus optimization. Some people call that lean or, 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 or whatever. We just, what we understand is, is that if a business understands how to do a bunch of things a little bit better, it's not this massive one thing you do. It's a bunch of things you do a little bit better. And you constantly have a system in place that allows you to constantly then improve upon that. Small margins can equal big results. And so I think what we're going to be getting to in your case study, which I'm excited to hear about, is, you know, how it's not it's not one little thing. It's a bunch of things you're doing in job costing accounting or or you're doing in terms of how you're managing information that add up to big savings and over many, many projects adds up to less labor cost, Mm -hmm. better margins, and better project outcomes. And so share with us a little bit about maybe a quick example. Yeah, so one of our accounting system customers is one of the largest concrete contractors in North America. They're about a billion dollar company. I was out visiting them three years ago. This is actually a story of how Struxy came to be. And they were sharing with me their top five strategic initiatives, which were all the same thing, which was cut the amount of waste associated with keeping track of time and quantity consumption on job sites. Because when you pour concrete for a living, your costs are really two things, right? Labor, raw material going in the hole, right? right? And I said, this is great because we have a bunch of software that's built to manage time, equipment, and productivity. And the CIO at that company said, we looked at it and it's not a great fit for us. We think it's missing some things. And so what we decided to do, because we love working with those guys, we know how smart they are, how progressive they are. We said, we'll bring you into the development of the next generation of that software and we'll pay for it. Because we we know that getting you guys hooked up with us is going to really build the intellectual property portfolio at Penta. And we think we're going to be able to do great things for you guys. So we worked together to build out the things that they thought were missing in our software. And less than six months later, we had it rolled out on job sites. Today, two years later, there are 23 to 2,500 field laborers all across the country. Every day, their time and productivity is tracked in our software. And when they did some initial time and work studies, they found that they were going to be able to redeploy half the payroll team because those people weren't going to be hand punching paper time cards and managing exceptions and chasing after the foreman at five o'clock who didn't send in the time card. Just so the savings on something like that alone. I'm, I'm trying to get yeah, I mean, deploy 10 smart people who know construction accounting someplace else in your business. That's amazing. 
<laughs> they found that they got rid of payroll rounding. So now when the foreman isn't having to recall the last weeks of work, last week of work, and they've got accurate punch in and punch out times for everybody, they found they were going to save between five and 10% of their total payroll costs by paying their guys more accurately. But the biggest single savings was an hour to an hour and a half a day put back into their project foreman and project leads hands because they weren't chasing after 40 guys on a job site every day. When did you get here? When did you leave? What are you going to work on? Instead, they were able to get in front of all that. Hey, everybody, you're on team A, you're on team B, team A, you're working on site prep, team B, you're tying rebar, team C, you're rod busting today. At the end of the day, I'm going to walk the site real quick. What do we get done? Boom, right into computer software. And then all of that stuff flows into their productivity reporting. They're Johnny on the spot with keeping track of all of their data as a business. They're looking at their jobs every day now, as opposed to once a month in the big project manager meeting that we all know and love that isn't particularly efficient because it's looking at things that you no longer can control because they happened three and a half weeks ago. And so they think that this software is saving them somewhere between 25 and $30 million a year on their billion dollar top line of revenue. Wow. And so 40% additional bottom line. Am I, am I hearing that right? Well, it's, it's closer. I mean, you know, when you look at 30 million on, on the billion, it's, it's a lot less than 30%, but, 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 but here's the thing. I mean, if, if you think about that, right, you could look at it as a percentage of top line revenue, but the better way to look at it is as a percentage of their total margin, where it is a lot closer to that percentage you mentioned, because what's, what's a typical operating margin on a concrete construction company? It's typically yeah. single digits, right? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and so we just, what did we do? Did we help double their productivity and profitability just by enabling their foreman to better manage the jobs? So if I'm running a, if, if, if I'm sitting here and I'm listening to this and I'm a general contractor and I've got a hundred million dollar business, I'm now thinking, okay, so I could add $3 million to my bottom line yeah. by becoming more efficient. Yes. If, that, if that's true, that's, the game changer. That might even just just to give a sense of if you're let's let's talk enterprise value because we talked about that a second yeah. ago, and you attach I don't know what a, a seven multiple to that, right? Yeah, that's twenty million dollars in value of your business. Let's just kind of keep it, you know. Yeah, simple, right? Right, and you could that, do it on a you could do it on a bar napkin. Or on the back of a blueprint the the is no bar, longer accurate, right? Bar, yeah. bar nap, you've usually had too many drinks and you're like, yes. million. <laughs> right? Well, I need to talk to you about my 200 million. Can you meet with me? Yeah. Uh, but but um, look, that's real significant. You know, even a half million dollars in bottom line to your enterprise value, your investable resources yes. um, is significant in the growth and value of your business. So this is not chump change for those who are listening. This right. is serious. So talk to me maybe a little bit about, you know, you guys are part of the revolution, but the construction industry is known as a sleepy business, as you pointed out, yeah. you know, what would you say? How, how would you say this is good for companies? Why do they have to do this? Why do they not have a choice, but they're going to have to get good at, at bringing technology like this into their business. Why, why is what you offer so good for companies? Maybe in, you know, 30 seconds. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, dinosaurs no longer roam the earth, <laughs> right? <laughs> like that, and, and, you know, you could say, all right, meteor hit the earth. That was a once in a lifetime event, but like better, faster, more efficient animals now roam the jungle. Right. Right. And, and, and I think that, Construction companies need to realize this, that like, just because you've been able to build some personal wealth for yourself as an owner, just because you've got a record backlog of work and you feel that that is making you nice and comfortable and safe and secure, you got to realize that every once in a while, it makes sense to pick your head up, look around and see what other people are doing. And I'm telling you, like this billion dollar concrete construction company, they're coming for you. Yep. Right. And, and guess what? 
the GC, the owner, they want that to happen. Because well, the, the GC and the owner, they know that they're paying for inefficiency right now. I mean, there's a reason why Procore is a $12 billion company. Procore started because the CEO of Procore was building a house in California. And he thought, you know, I'm not so sure I trust my contractors. I'm not so sure I trust that they're getting something done every day. I want them to upload progress reports and pictures to this new thing called the internet every day on the job. And where did Procore take off? It took off with general contractors and owners as a tool to try to force the trades to get more efficient in how they were executing the work, to try to get them to be more transparent. And so if, if you think that you're nice and comfortable and you're going to be able to ignore that this is the way the industry is moving, you can look at any other industry in American business and see the case study for how that is never going to happen. Well, and, 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 and I'll even say, I know in your business, you're, you're, you're living by your principles. Yeah. Even in my business, you know, for everyone who's listening, you know, we're, we're arguably the, you know, the largest within Sandler, in what mm -hmm. we do, but we for years hit a ceiling that we could not get beyond. And it was, it was all the same reasons that we see in our clients, our construction uh, industry uh, clients which is unique talent mm -hmm. uh, process that we were using internally, believe it or not, that was us. And until we started measuring our people and their efficiency and looking for ways to optimize that, we could not grow no matter how many people we added to the mix. Growth didn't happen. We could add, we could subtract, didn't matter. Same, same result every year. And so by measuring and, and understanding what to look at and measure, we began to improve. So I'm going to ask you a question here, uh, Bill, about, you know, you know, how has the industry changed in the last 10 years? And what do you see the biggest change coming in the next 10 years? But one thing I'm taking away from you is, is that if transparency and it is not part of your plan, yeah. the transparency in the project on understanding where things are, I would say it's, it, the, the last 10 years, based on what you've talked to me and what I've seen is that it, it's almost like a, uh, like a bamboo shoot, right? For years, it's, it stays underground, you know, and then finally it shoots up. I think by the time you realize that you missed the boat on this, mm -hmm. it's you're, 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 you're missed the boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That boat's not it's circling right. back to pick you up. It's not circling back for you. So yeah. um, this is, you know, I, I'm just going to urge people to, to really be paying attention to this concept of transparency. But what do you see from your vantage point? What what has been growing in the industry, but is about to really break out in the next 10 years? Huge demographic shift, I think, is going to power a lot of this. Right. I mentioned a 22 year old just out of college before who is not going to want to do things the old school way. You know, it, it's funny. Like, I get a lot of pushback on technology being deployed to a job site, right? My guys aren't, aren't going to like it. And the right. analogy I love to share with people is I'm old enough that I was working as a general contractor when cordless drills were invented. It's technology, right? Right. We didn't fight that at all. Right. And the first cordless drills were not great. You know, you would tear through a battery in a half hour. So we had chargers all over the place and batteries everywhere. And sometimes they would break or they let the smoke out. But once we got those things in our hands, we were never going back to extension cords. <laughs> it's the exact same thing with technology and the people that we need to get into this industry, the next generation of construction rock stars, they expect it because they grew up with it. And if you don't believe me, hand an iPad to a two-year-old and watch what happens. Right. So what I'm hearing is, and, and, and this is such a great point. In the next 10 years, if you want to hire the next generation or or in, spend a lot of time leadership development with our general contractors and subs, you better have technology be a part of that if you want to attract the best and the brightest talent. It's not enough to say this is a cool industry. You should right. be in it. But you've actually got to say, look, let you're going to be trained on the latest technology that allows us to skyrocket growth earnings the types of projects we want, but it starts with how you're going to be trained on technology to understand how this industry works. It can't just be 
that, you know, follow, put somebody on your hip and let them follow you around. Right. Absolutely. Um, so uh, if you're recruiting, make uh, technology a part of that conversation. Uh, because that is what excites people today. What's new? What's changing? Where can I make an impact? And while I think a lot of people in the construction industry are proud of the buildings they built, they can look around and they can see, they can see the results of their efforts. And that is a source of great mm -hmm. pride for a lot of people, not just the income, but um, it, it really, for the next generation, what matters to them a lot is making change and making Absol change for the better. Absolutely. And I mean, like that's an unbeatable competitive advantage if you're trying to attract talent that every day when you walk off the job site, there, there's something, your impact is immediately visceral. So let's level out all the other things that we were at a disadvantage with other industries, right? If right. you could do that, like, I think we could get more of those young people into this industry to deal with this huge labor shortage and labor productivity problem we have. So I'm, I'm going to summarize what, what I've learned from you. And, and that is number one is, is that it's, it's time to catch up to the rest of the world in how we manage projects, how we manage labor, how we uh, control our costs and, and, and improve our costs to provide a better product at a, at a better outcome at a better time frame, at a better margin. Um, we've got to be thinking entrepreneurial. We no longer can have this, you know, as another contractor once told me, he said, you know, I've never driven by a Burger King and there was a sign out front and said, we're closed because we had a really unique manager <laughs> quit and we don't know where we're going to find another one like that manager. I love that. Burger King's always open and there is always a manager there. Yeah. And so you can't have your business rely upon a unique talent. And, and certainly you need to appreciate and honor and celebrate your people that uniquely did help you get where you are. But you need to understand that that has to be knowledge within your business that other people can quickly uh, you utilize or you are going to become the dinosaur. You do not. And if you don't want to go down that road, I suggest you sell your business now. Yeah. Get it because you're, you're, you're right now labor is at a premium. You, you can sell your business for your people. Uh, mm -hmm. to go work somewhere where they are going to provide growth opportunity and, 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 and better technological solutions. Um, but if you do want to take the ride for the next 10 years, you've got to think as an entrepreneur, you've got to think transparency and you got to think rather than I'm going to manage all the unmanageable stuff in the project. Instead, I'm going to thin slice and understand every aspect of my process. And it's going to be measured with software rather than eyeballing it so that a 22 year old can do it rather than somebody that's got 50 years experience in the industry. And as you said, thinking about retirement. Um, so you have some cool tools on your website. I, I yeah. want people to understand how they can get a better understanding. You know, people typically take this. I want to explore this a little bit before I want to jump, you know, right in. So um, in a second, I'm going to ask, you know, how, how do people get in contact with you? Sure. But I want to talk about your website a little bit because you got a little mm -hmm. bit of stuff where people can get their toe in in 15 minutes and kind of get a good sense of yeah. how this could impact their business. And I got to tell you, from everything you said, every one of our clients around the country, you know, and, and we work with a very large organization that works with all the general contractors in the country. And and I'd really like to make sure that we help you get um, a voice there if you don't already have a, a, a strong voice there. So I'm, I'm committing to help you in this revolution. I appreciate that. That's that's the way the new economy works. Right. We should all cooperate, not compete. That's it. That's it. No, you're you. You make everyone we work with better uh, and get them ready for the next 10 years. And so, uh, but some people may want to go and just learn a little bit on their own and self-study. Talk to us about some of the resources on your website that yeah. people can get and use. Yeah. So, you know, if you're interested in the labor productivity tools, it's called Struxy, which is hard to say intentionally, struxi.com. We've got the case study that I mentioned earlier, we have an ebook that uh, is provocatively titled "Not Your Grandfather's Construction Business Plan," <laughs> right? Um, we have the aforementioned calculator. We have short videos that explain how the software works. And you, you mentioned like, how do you get a hold of me? We're a 38-person company. We're small. I'm easy to find. I love talking about this stuff. I love the industry. And so, 
you know, you could get a hold of me directly on LinkedIn. You could click a button on the website, fill out a form, and the team will get you in touch with me. One of the great things about the software we built for labor productivity, I could show you how the entire thing works end to end in less than 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah. So somebody could do maybe a Zoom meeting, lunch and learn with, Absolutely. Their, with their team and, and get a good sense of what you do and maybe even run a hypothetical project. Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the things that we'll offer to all the listeners of your podcast, if you're a good fit for this software and you can envision how it can help transform your business, we'll let you try it for, on a project, no cost. And you know, we've told people in the past, if we don't make you more efficient and if your guys have a hard time learning how to use this stuff, we'll show up and buy pizza for everybody on the job site. Uh, I know everybody likes pizza. So there Absolutely. You go. Well, maybe vegetables now since we talk. Now, now it's got <laughs> vegetables and a salad. I can Absolutely. Try, not like that. Yeah. Um, but um, that's a great offer. I hope everyone's hearing and I hope you take uh, it, Philip, on this offer because this is an opportunity for you to see what's going to happen over the next 10 years, whether you like it or not. I believe this is the golden age for construction. Yes. And this is the biggest opportunity to make some big decisions about whether you want to participate, I think this is one you've got to decide on. You've got to decide how you're going to manage jobs in the future and how you're going to do more with less. Your ability to do that will emerge you as a leader in the industry and allow you to gobble up the competition and allow you to do more work uh, and more good in your market. So um, I really appreciate, Bill, you being on this podcast and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, helping you out and, and getting this nationwide, uh, you know, on, on, a, on a bigger basis uh, with some of our construction clients and partners. I had a blast. Thank you, Matthew. I really appreciate the opportunity. It's a great conversation. And you could tell the two of us are clearly very passionate about this industry transforming for the better. And we're putting our money where our mouth is on it, too. That's it. A hundred percent. So, Bill, thank you. I'm Matthew Newberger. You've been listening to The Construction Revolution. And until we see each other again, figure out that next way. You're going to participate. I know Bill and I are, and we'd love to have you join the journey with us and thousands of general contractors, subcontractors, suppliers in the industry to make construction a better place in the next 10 years. Thanks, Bill.